Hello, my name is Ashley Woodruff, and I'm one of the reference and instruction librarians here at Clayton State. Today we're going to go over how to evaluate the resources you find when you are conducting your research. Evaluating your resources is important because you want to ensure that the information you use is accurate and that you are using the most appropriate resource for your assignments. In 1998, a man named Jim Capoon wrote an article with five criteria that students can use to evaluate web resources. These criteria will be especially handy if you are using Google, Bing, or any other online search engine to find information. The five criteria are accuracy, authority, objectivity, currency, and coverage. An easy way to remember them is by the acronym AAOCC. Now, each of these criteria has a set of questions that you can ask yourself to determine whether the resource is meeting that criteria. Let's start with accuracy. You want to ask yourself, is the information correct? Is the data verifiable? If they are citing outside statistics in their article, can you find the original source of those statistics? Do the numbers match up? Does the article have spelling errors? Was the article written well? Is the information clear and easy to understand? If you see spelling errors, or if the article wasn't written well enough for you to understand what the writer was trying to tell you, that can be indicative of a lack of editing. That's not good, because now we're doubting the accuracy of the article. We don't really know if anyone else verified the information before the author published it. Next is authority. You want to ask yourself, who wrote the article? What are the author's credentials? Who published the article? Basically, you want to be sure that the author who is giving you this information is an expert or otherwise very knowledgeable in that particular field. If you can't find any proof that the author or the publisher has a background in that field, it casts doubt on the accuracy of the information you are receiving from that resource. Up next is objectivity. Here we are on the lookout for bias. You want to know, could the author of the article be biased? Was the research sponsored by an individual or group that would benefit from the results? You also want to know, what was the goal of the article? If the article was written to achieve some sort of goal, like convincing the reader of some idea, then the information might be biased and not completely accurate. If the author or the publisher stands to gain something by writing the article, again, it is possible that the information is biased. We want to get our information from objective sources so that we can have more confidence that the information hasn't been skewed one way or the other. Next is currency. This is especially relevant if you are doing research in a rapidly changing field. You'll want to look at when the article was written. When was the information last updated? Are there dead links? That's usually a sign that the page hasn't been updated recently. Is the information outdated? You don't want to use outdated information thinking that it's still correct. If you are writing about a current event or occurrence, you don't want to use an article written 10 years ago. You want to look for something newer. Older articles can be used to provide a historical perspective, but that should be reflected in your assignment. Finally, we have coverage. How does the article compare to others in the field? Did the author provide relevant citations? Does the article seem complete? You want to know if the author of the article you're evaluating came to the same conclusions as others in the field. You want to know if the author did their research before publishing their article. Do they completely explain their idea? Did they draw any conclusions? So the next time you're doing research, use these five criteria to evaluate the resource you found to ensure that you are getting the most accurate information for your assignments. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to contact us. You can send us a chat, call us at the reference desk, or send us an email.